so now we've got our fender washed and I've got it set up here where I can get to everything as far as uh, painting goes and what I want to do now that it's been washed good with soap and water is I want to take and this is important a uh, lint free cloth of some type if you use something that uh, lint will come off of uh, it'll stick to the fender potentially and then you'll get it in your paint and of course you don't want that so these are just shop towels I don't know if technically they're lint free but I can look at them and tell that they're certainly going to be more lint free than a just a standard rag uh, you could probably get by with a, a paper towel as well uh, that it it might leave some lint uh, these seem to be a little bit better in that scenario so this is just again a roll of uh, shop towels from the auto parts store and I'm going to use uh, some lacquer thinner and that will clean the fender up real good get any kind of uh, uh, grease that may have come off of my hand uh, off of it and give us a good clean surface to do our painting with So I'm just going to take one of these rags give a good dose of lacquer thinner be sure to put your top back on the lacquer thinner because it will evaporate fast and then just lightly wipe it down. You don't have to get a lot of pressure on it and make sure that you've got just the rag on it and not your hand, of course. Because uh, your hand will leave oils and you know, whatever you might have on it left on the fender. You can see what's picked up off of that. And of course, it's not a lot, but when you're talking about paint, it kind of is. One thing I did not mention too when we were sanding that is probably one of the most important things when it comes to preparation other than just the stuff that I went over before uh, the edges uh, the edges get neglected all the time and I can assure you that if you don't spend the proper time on the edges you will regret uh, when it comes time to survey the work you did and you know essentially grade yourself uh, there are more times than not if you if you don't give the edges the proper uh, attention that they deserve you will see it after the fact and what that means is it's like say I get the fender on and I don't I don't pay attention to this edge and it doesn't get all the you know a good prep job or paint either one you could miss it uh, in either step and you will absolutely be able to see it in the finished final job so be sure you pay attention to those sand them all good uh, wipe them all clean Again, you want to make sure you just get all the different places that dust could be hiding. Because you don't want to take your aerosol can and blow through something that's got a bunch of dust trapped in it and it just blows out and gets all over your paint. That is so frustrating when you see it. All right, so now we've got a clean fender. Been wiped with lacquer thinner. And we're going to 
get ready for paint now. So the paint I got is made by Dupacolor. You can buy it at the auto parts place. And the, the nice thing about this is it duplicates your original color. So hopefully it's going to match our truck pretty good. Uh, we're going to have an issue where you've got old paint on the truck and this is going to be new paint. So naturally this is going to be brighter. Uh, we'll, you know, for, for what we're doing, we're not going to worry a whole lot about that. Uh, you know, at this point, all I could tell you to do is, you know, the more you, you pay attention to the existing paint job, uh, after the fact, wash it, maybe even uh, wax it, buffing maybe, uh, just bring the, the, the color or the, the finish back to as, as, as bright as, you know, you possibly can, you know, from when it was new, then you've got a better chance of this not sticking out like a sore throne. Uh, I, I'm not really concerned about that. I just wanted the colors to match. And so if you're doing a job like this, that's I'm going to guess it's going to be your primary concern anyway. Uh, it's not necessarily having, you know, from a body shop, you're going to expect that the colors are the same. And the body shop actually has a way to tint paint so that it can uh, take you know what was the original factory paint and make it look old to match the vehicle and so what they do is, is after they get the vehicle in they they you know get the paint that's that's used on the on the car or truck and they you know do a, do a little deal where they're you know trying to test how just how far gone the paint is being you know faded and whatnot and then they put tint, they add tint into the paint, and that's what uh, dulls it, if you will. And then, uh, you know, keeps them from having to paint the whole car. So again, this is Dupa color, perfect match. The thing here is uh, that, that you want to pay attention to. Uh, this particular color is Cayman Green Met. And you can see, I don't know if you can see here or not, but in parentheses it says DA. Well, that DA is actually uh, the paint code that I found on the uh, sticker that's inside the door jam of the vehicle. So that will, that will help you uh, when it comes time to trying to find the right paint. I mean, chances are if you go in and, and like this is a Ford Ranger and I, I know it's green, and so I go and I look in the in the uh, on the shelf for this, and I've got dupe color, duplicates original four colors, and I've got you know Cayman green metallic. Chances are that for your vehicle there may only be one green, and so this is an obvious choice that you've got the right one. But if you want to make absolutely sure, or if there's multiple greens in this case, then uh, that's what this DA in parentheses is. It's supposed to. Uh, you know, tell you for sure which which paint code that you're matching up with. So obviously you want to shake it, make sure that it's uh, mixed up really good. Okay, and the instructions here say that you want to apply two to three light coats. So don't try to cover the entire fender all in one uh, application. You want to put a light coat on there let it flash it says to wait 10 minutes before you do the second coat and then potentially a third coat depending on the coverage that you get so that's what uh, you want to keep in mind and then uh, we're going to follow this up with clear uh, it says to wait 30 minutes before applying the clear so we'll do two to three coats 10 minutes a piece in the middle uh, to let the the paint flash and then 30 minutes then apply the, the clear coat to its specifications. All right, so when getting ready to apply your paint, you want some type of uh, mask on. For this, since we're just using the spray can, honestly, a dust mask is gonna be more than sufficient, I believe. Uh, you can use a respirator if you have access to one, uh, but I'm gonna just use this dust mask. So what we want to do when we're applying this is we want to start at the top and work our way down 
and when we when we paint we want to overlap the last run that we make by 50 percent so i want to start on this edge and i'm going to paint here and then when i come back for the second run down the fender i'm going to overlap the previous line 50 percent and so i just wanted to point that out before i put my mask on and you uh, couldn't tell exactly what i was doing Alright, so we've got the first coat put down. Uh, the, we didn't try to get uh, full coverage on it, obviously. Uh, that was not the intention. We just want to put the base down. And, you know, it's, it does look a little uneven. You'll get that, especially with a metallic. Uh, the more you try to overlap that half each time, the, the less you're going to get of that, but you're still going to get some. It just sticks out more uh, when, you, when you're doing metallic. So don't freak out if you see this, uh, you know, when, if you've got a metallic color and think, oh my goodness, it's going to look like a zebra. Uh, chances are, you know, once you get the, the additional coverage on it, it'll, it'll even out just fine. Uh, the temperature has something to do with it as well. Uh, today it's like 50 degrees outside. It was probably borderline too cold to be doing this today, but I went ahead and decided to do it in, uh, in, and just chance it. So hopefully we'll get a good finish you know, after the second and third coat. All right, so we've waited 10 minutes, and now we're going to put our second coat on. So you should see a little bit better coverage with this, this next one. Alright, so you can see some of these spots here that I did not sand off with the old paint that uh, probably should have been. So it's going to take a lot more to get that covered. So hopefully we can get that done. You'll also see, you know, with that metallic, you can see there's a little slight run there. Uh, again, it has a lot to do with it being cold. Uh, we'll see what we can do about, uh, you know, some additional coverage to cover some of that up. Um, I might have messed up here, but we'll see. We'll see what we come out with. All right, this is coat number three. So me not ever 
have painted with this particular kind of paint before. Uh, you know, I, I was hoping that the coverage was going to be a little bit better than what it is. So you can see these dark spots here that essentially uh, was left over from the other paint. Uh, we wouldn't have that problem if I had primed it, which, you know, in retrospect, probably I should have done that. Uh, so all we, the only choice we've got right now is just to keep putting coats on it until we get the coverage that we need to get uh, those dark spots uh, painted over. So I'm thinking, you know, this is, this is coat three. I'm thinking that we're probably going to wind up putting another couple of coats on it at least. And hopefully uh, we can get the coverage that we need in order to get these dark spots uh, covered. But the rest of it's looking pretty good, actually. Uh, we've got uh, a few light spots here and there. Uh, again, a lot of that is the um, characteristics of having uh, metallic. But uh, I think, you know, for, for a spray can paint job, it, it looks pretty good. All right. So this is the fourth coat. Uh, obviously, we've went past the, the two to three coats. Uh, one of the big reasons is because I didn't prime it. So uh, a good lesson here is, you know, pay me now, pay me later kind of thing. You can spend the money on the primer, put the primer on there and have a good base so that you can get better coverage or you can wind up spending more on additional paint or, or top coat and, uh, you know, get the coverage that way. Can number two. All right, this is going to be number five. This should be our final one. Well, it will be because that's all the paint I got left. All right, we got the base put down. I think we wound up with a total of six or seven coats on it. Uh, the coverage did finally come out okay. I think I'm pretty happy with it. We're gonna put the clear on it now, which this is the matching clear to go with the paint that we put on it for the base. It's Duplicolor, uh, perfect match, and it's just the protective clear coat. 
So we'll put however many coats we can get with this can on it. My guess is we'll probably get two coats on it before we run out, and that should be fine. All right, we're gonna put our mask on. This clear, you definitely want to be wearing. If you did not, if you did not uh, take my advice for the uh, the color, the base coat, I definitely do it for the clear because that stuff it'll get in your lungs and it won't be good. So, put some kind of mask on, respirator, do something. Uh, this what I'm wearing would be considered a minimal uh, protection but it's something so you won't uh, have clear in your nose and lungs all right same kind of thing overlap 50 percent with each pass and uh we should it should bring this thing out uh shiny when we get through All right, this is the second car to clear. All right, third and final coat of clear. I think I've got enough in this can to get one more complete coat done. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention as a tip, and you probably saw as I was applying this, is I was kind of walking with the paint can in my hand, as opposed to standing center and waving my arms. The reason why uh, I did that was so that I could keep the spray can at the same distance away from the panel all the way across. So if I just stood here in the center and went back and forth, I would be further away on this end of the fender and I would be closer on this end of the fender. And you would definitely see that. Uh, the, the paint will not be even. It'll look uh, like there's more overspray over here, you'll wind up potentially running something over here because you're getting too much paint. So, 8 to 10 inches, 12 at the most, and so you just want to, you know, kind of gauge that and just walk right along with it. And when you're overlapping, you want to have as much light as possible on the panel. And you can probably tell I don't have that good of light here. Uh, the reason why you need that is so that you can see where you just were at uh, in your spray pattern because otherwise you're kind of guessing when you're doing that 50% overlap and if you want true uh, coverage, uh, you know, where you're getting a true 50% overlap on each pass, uh, you know, take a floodlight or something and just put it right up on there so you can see and uh, the more light you've got the better. And so I just wanted to share that tip with you. Uh, again, this is going to be the third and final pass. And then we're going to go home for the night.
1995 Ford Ranger Fender Cayman Green Metallic Dupla color About six or seven coats of base which is equivalent to two cans worth of that and then one can of clear and there you have it a DIY spray can paint job